All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Expanse Season 4 reviews. I didn't know they were on. I didn't know they were on. I come home from work, I get ready to eat, I'm fooling around with stuff. I was actually recording something else when I, uh, in editing. Where I turned on Amazon Prime to to see when you know the episode to be available. I was checking to see if they'd come on at like eleven o'clock at night, because it would be twelve cent uh, twelve Eastern. Here we are. Expanse season four episode one was up. The whole season's up. I don't know if it's because I'm a Prime member or if because I do some stuff for Amazon occasionally. I don't know. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> so to all of you that are new to my channel, uh, that watch this. Uh, I started watching The Expanse not too long ago, about a year or so ago, and I reviewed all the episodes. They're all on my channel, uh, and you can find them under playlists. Uh, I want to thank everybody that, that's uh, joined us that were already uh, have already seen my other videos, that have subscribed to that. Um, we're going to be doing all of Season 4. We've got two contests going. Uh, one will be doing uh, the contest winner for one of these Doors and Corner Miller shirts. Um, and then at the end of the reviews, like halfway point, we'll be giving this shirt away, uh, one of these shirts away. And at the end of the season reviews, we're going to be giving away one, either uh, a season one, two, or three DVD or Blu-ray of your choice. You have to be a subscriber to the channel and leave a comment on any of these season four videos. Those are the stipulations. So, welcome to the Expanse Season 4. I can't believe it's here. The new episode, episode 1, is called New Terra. Full spoilers if you have not seen this episode. <laughs> because of, I, I was so not ready to watch this, it's like, boom, in my face. So we're back. And it was excellent. It is your pretty standard, here's where everything is. Here's where we're going, kind of set up episode. A lot of shows do that at the beginning of new seasons. What's different about this, though, is that, you know, it kind of felt like we were uh, shutting the chapter of a book at the end of season three and not knowing if they were coming back after being canceled by Sci-Fi, one of the many mistakes Sci-Fi Channel uh, makes uh, on, a, on a practically yearly basis on canceling good shows this being the best of the ones that they've canceled uh, and picked up by Amazon and the show doesn't miss a beat does not miss a beat the production value is still there the acting is all there we got back actors like David Strathairn uh, he's still in this I did not see Elizabeth Mitchell in this episode so I don't know if her story is done uh, like I said I have not I've only read part of book one so I am a non-book reader for the most part on the, uh, during these reviews. So all of you that read the books, I am coming at it from that perspective of just somebody who's watching it as we go along. Um, but I don't. I know all the cast of characters. In fact, I got. I don't think I need my tablet for names and stuff. But um, just a, is a general, you know, giving it a general. Um, We'll once see over. Um, so things are basically exactly what you would expect. <laughs> Something you know, things change and then they you know they they stay the same at the same time. Because like Holden said, we're gonna have a bloody gold rush once the rings are open, and that is exactly what ha is happening. Belters everywhere are trying to get through the rings to state claims, you know, state claims of their own. They want their own life. They want to get away from everything. There are 1,300 places to go, and there are blockades outside the rings because everybody's trying to control. You know, there's they're trying to be safe about it. Before I guess, I, I don't want to just jump in. It's very hard to not just jump into this. My overall thoughts, though, are like I said. It's back. I'm. It's the production quality's there. The acting's there. The writing's there. We have. Uh, you know, we're we're taking a step away from you know spaceship sets. Uh, they're still here in droves, but now we've got. You know, we're on land. Naomi is on land. Amos is on land. Alex is on land. <laughs> we're seeing the whole crew. You know, get to do new things. Uh, Christian Avasarala is 
you know, back to form. Drummer, oh, the great Kara G. I thought I, I you know, like I, I have a thing for Kerry Coon and for Kara G. Wow, two girls with C names. I don't know if that's, yeah, that can't be, it's just a coincidence. But she's back as well, uh, in command of like, where at least her and Ashford are working uh, together uh, with a treaty that they signed for the OPA to, to work together with the inners, uh, which is a very controversial thing, like right off the bat. But uh, this episode does everything I wanted it to do and more. And, and we even have Thomas Jane in here as Miller, too. Just so, you know, for anybody that wants the non-spoilery part of this, uh, you know, told. But we're, we're getting into spoilers now, for sure. So this episode was written by Mark Fergus and Hawk Ostby and directed by Breck Eisner. Great job, guys, because we start out at the Sol Ring, right, where unidentified, unidentified belter ships are trying to get into the ring. You know, like I said, people are just trying to get their own, you know, stake of property, get their own life, get their better life for their kids. I mean, I like how, I think it's kind of funny that they want to stay belters, right? But they're also being told that if they go down there by other belters, that you're not going to be a belter anymore. You're going to be an inner and you're going to start to forget where you came from. But I mean, in the end, I mean, it's evolution, right? We have to like, we want the best for our kids. I mean, nobody... I don't think anybody chose to be a belter uh, because they just like being out there. It's It was the only option that a lot of these people had, and now some of them are trying to make other decisions. Does that mean that they have to change being how they how a belter is? Probably not. But I mean, after, you know, when time goes on, if things succeed, you know, I think you just kind of develop new ways of living, and I think people... Uh, are having a hard time not even thinking. They are having a hard time letting part of that go. Some of these people think, like Drummer says, you know, that these people are foolish because uh, she's a belter through and through, you know, and I don't know if we'll ever see her. Uh, you know, I think we're probably going to see her step onto some planet sometime, uh, but, you know, she'd have to go through the same process that Naomi, Naomi has to go through. Well, this refugee ship gets fired upon, and they get through, though. Some of them don't, man. Some of them just get blown up. You know, they're saying, you know, kill us or let us go. And, you know, they, they start to chant, go, go, go. And we flash to Earth eight months later, where Holden and his mom, played by Francis Fisher, uh, are having, like, a nice little reunion. Yeah, we couldn't go. And this is where Holden starts seeing... And he throws the, the coffee or whatever on the fire. Sees the planet turn black. Kind of looks like the station. And something black and gooey kind of venom symbiote shooting out of it. And this is when Miller shows up. And he's, you know, what's interesting about what they're doing here with Thomas Jane is he, he's memories. He's the protomolecule, like, using memories of Miller's to have a conversation with Holden. He's kind of on this loop where he just keeps saying, you know, we got to talk about that riot kid, next clue uh, in the case. That stuff that he said, I think, way back in season one to Havelock, I think, right? With the whole Julie Mao case beginning. So, <clears throat> we're probably going to see quite a few things times uh, him bring up past uh, conversations that fit uh, what he wants done. It kept, it's hard to keep saying, you know, like it's just, it's not Miller. It, but it's looking like Miller to be uh, something familiar for Holden to look at. And it's nice for us, too, because then we get Thomas Jane occasionally. So, like I said, he, Miller's now, like, the protomolecule is an investigator. It's looking for something. It's trying to find out what killed the people that made the And so that's what's driving Holden and Miller, Miller forward. They got to go to New York, though, to talk to Avicerala. Um, we have this nice scene where, you know, Naomi has clearly met her, his, Holden's parents, so they're a real thing now. Um, Stephen Strait, again, I can't believe how much I like him. He just keeps getting better on this show. Um, from a guy who could not stand him on, uh, Magic City, okay? I could not stand his character. 
so much that I was taking it out on the actor. Where I was just like, I didn't want to see him in anything. Then we get to The Expanse and I find out he's on this and I'm like, oh no. But I'm glad to be proven wrong because Stephen Strait is like one of my absolute favorite characters on this show. He's, he's way up there. Uh, I still don't know who my favorite character is. I mean, I'd say it's Miller, but like he's he's like the heart that keep that kept that started me on this show. But I think it's probably Amos. But then I also go, well, I like everybody almost equally. But I actually, it's probably Drummer. So you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so. Alex and Amos, though, this is a great scene because we get a callback. Well, not really a callback, but I thought we were done with Clarissa Mao, and clearly we're not. She was arrested, put in jail. They threw the book at her. As Amos says, they really threw the book at you. We also know that Mao's in jail forever and that she's in jail forever, and she sometimes likes to call Amos up for a little chat, and he accepts the calls. And she's calling to tell him thanks. Um for what he did to her or did for her which was he actually you know gave her an option to kill herself <laughs> but he's not going to come right out and say that he did you know he just says you know hey everybody should have a choice and you didn't take it and that's something even you know like he respects even more he's such a he's such a, a blunt force with his words but at the same time, you can just tell that, like, through the, that bluntness, there is that person who cares, who's willing to be loyal and, and go with a full nine with you. Uh, I don't even know what that means, the full nine. To go all the way with a friendship. Like, once you've got, like, Amos's loyalty, it's it seems like a pretty unbreakable thing. And he tells her that, like, no matter what, man, you know, while you're in there, take everything that they give, give nothing back. Um, so, and, and I did not expect this scene. I really did not expect this. And I also didn't expect to actually give a shit about what happened to Clarissa Mao. But I do. And maybe that's because uh, she's got Amos's kind of, you know, if, if Amos is, is willing to talk to her, then I'm willing to listen. He also calls her peaches, which is crazy. <laughs> Um, but Abasarala, she's here wanting more ships at the blockade, and she's back to her fucking swearing best. She's just like, shut the fuck up, and I don't want to hear your fucking shit. It's great. Plus, she just looks fantastic doing Look at that outfit. Look at that outfit. And she's like, she's got this girl named Nancy Gao trying to tell her that, you know, that, I mean, she's Nancy's not wrong, right? The half the population is unemployed, and they want to have an opportunity to strike it out there, just like a gold rush. But Abasarala is like, yeah, man, but, you know, just like in the gold rush that happened all those years ago, all those people went out there and died. So many people just went out there and just got slaughtered. And it's true. Watch Ken Burns' The West. It's horrifying. <laughs> so she's not saying that they don't, she doesn't want to do something right for the people and help them get jobs and help them, you know, get better lives. But if you just got start running out there, you're going to start piling up bodies quick. And just because you haven't seen any little green men doesn't mean that it, they're not out there. That doesn't mean that once you charge out there, it's not going to happen. Now, you know that eventually the, the camel, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back is going to happen. And there, there's going to probably be a, a rush of people just flying through there. But she's trying to stall it as long as she can to make sure that things are safe, at least on New Terra. Which is why she's sending hold in there. Because the refugee ship that got through is actually broadcasting. And they're doing the usual Belter stuff where they look like they're in a video, like a music video. <laughs> where they're like, the Belters aren't going away. <laughs> it's like a rap video, you know, where they talk really close to the screen. It's like, Belters aren't going away. We're going to stay. <laughs> and it's just the way they talk with, <laughs> my God. It's been a really long day, everybody, so I apologize for that. <laughs> but she wants him to go to Elos, where there are about 100 survivors. They're mining lithium, which Holden's like, good for them. They got rich, you know? But she wants to know what's really going on, you know, make sure it's not an, another Eros, 
which means if the proto molecule is there and it starts take you know taking over things, we can't risk it. You got to get everybody out of there. Um, and I, what I like about after this is like when Holden gets back to the ship, Amos wants to know like what did Alvis Rao look like, and I'm like what. <laughs> Why is he going to know what Abbasarala... Does Amos have a crush on Christian Abbasarala? Because he's all like, No, man. What was she wearing? I'm like, Holy crap, man. How many... You know, like, Amos likes... You know, like, let's see. You got Anna. You got Clarissa Mao. Now Abbasarala. Wow, Amos has got some broad taste. Um, he's got good taste. But... <laughs> um, Holden here then again as usual is trying to put everything on himself because he's the one who opened the gates and that anything that comes through is on him but thankfully he's got Naomi there to bring him down a little bit like dude we were all there okay don't just put this all on yourself as usual like let it we'll we'll carry the load with you you know, be part of the crew. I did like that plaque that uh, Amos was screwing right here with everybody's name on it. That was pretty dope. Um, but now it's time for Naomi. She's stepping up. All right, no more sitting on the sidelines. No more hanging out in space. She's ready to be a part of the team on the ground. Boots on the ground, and that means that Naomi's got to start preparing for being on the ground, being out in space her whole life. It's about to get real painful for her to get where she needs to go. Remember in season one, that guy that Avasrala was, hung, that guy was hung up, like just ugh, and you know he had been in a tank and everything. So it's just like oof. Imagine if she just, she probably like just, like just crumple up from the pressure and all that, right? I, I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, that's why everybody looks all kind of. Like what Miller says in season one, you know, people with different awkward spines and things like that, and bone density, problems with that, and the heart. Um, so she's going to be preparing for that. And we get Bobby on Mars. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know why she's not with our crew yet. I was just, again, as soon as I see somebody, I'm like, get him on the Rossi. Please get him on the Rossi now. And apparently, she's Aunt Bobby. And that she's been staying with her brother, I'm assuming that's her brother, uh, who uh, is letting her stay there until she finds a place. Her nephew, yeah, her nephew's there, and he's got a date, and the girl comes in, and I, this part I was just kind of like, uh-huh. <laughs> because the girl's like, hey, nice to meet you. And I was just like, keep moving, lady. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but I just, you know, those kind of characters are just like, whatever, like, fine, fine. Um, Alex checking in on her, making sure she's all right. Uh, and it, it just, that just, that was just like too much of a tease, like Alex checking in, you know, just being like, you, you're, you're, you keep reminding me why, how bad I want her on the Rasenante right now by talking to her. But it's her setting up that she knows where they're going, although he can't confirm or deny. So I hope that that's just foreshadowing to say she knows where they are. So when she has time, because let's just do let's just deal with Bobby's part of the story because we kind of keep jumping back and forth. She goes to a bar. She's some guy kind of eyeballing her before she punches him out. He offers her a beer, um, and they talk about stuff. And this is when we find out that Bobby lost her pension from the hearings and everything that went on. So I feel like she's a free agent, all right? Because uh, she tells this guy, keep your you know, uniform because you know there's going to be plenty of wars to fight. Well, if, she can't, if she's been decommissioned, right? If she's out of the Mars army, then why can't we just uh, have her go out to Eros to, or Elos too? I'm just saying. Hopefully that happens because I really want to see as many of the crew get back together as we can. But I realize that that's not that's fan service. If it happens organically, great. I don't want to just have things happen to happen. You know, it's just I hope there's a reason that it happens. Also, uh, pirates. So Ashford used to be a pirate, and now he's in charge of taking pirates down. It appears. 
Uh, and these guys, man, aren't messing around. So when they get caught, they go ahead and they decide to dump their core. Like, <laughs> I don't want to, no pun intended here, but that's hardcore, dumping your core. So they dump their core and they have to back out, but one of them survives for a while, for a minute anyway. They get him on the ship and he's basically calling him an Uncle Tom kind of character where it's like, you're working for the inners, you're keeping the belters away. And, you know, I, and I, like I said, I understand it. I understand the Belters wanting it, but they're not, not even, so many of them aren't even trying. Like, for a guy like Ashford to be able to see how he needs to work and find a better way than just fighting, it makes me think that, like, okay, because Fred Johnson and Dawes, they're still out there. They're still doing their thing. So, are they still riling people up? over this because I mean I think that with some of the good faith that Fred's been able to build back up I feel like it's kind of a waste you know to just start throwing it all away right away like to just throw things into chaos again you know I know that they have uh, you know influence a lot of influence over what happens but we haven't actually seen Fred or Dawes and I can't oh man I hope we get Please tell me Fred Johnson and Dawes are coming back because both those actors, Chad Coleman and Jared Harris, Jared Harris, mm, the terror man, I know, and everything else he's been into. Uh, I can't wait to get them guys back in the show as well. Um, so, someone is ignoring the truce. That is what's been told. Someone out there, that's what Ashford wants to know. Who's ignoring the truce? And Holden was right bloody gold rush because this guy's coughing up blood as he basically dies well then we get to see Naomi going through the shots and that sound okay because I didn't know that that was her sitting there but when they when I heard that god awful sound I was like what the hell just made that noise that's an awful painful sound and it's Naomi taking those shots so holy crap Naomi uh I didn't know that people could make that noise when they're in pain. That sounded like the worst painful sound I'd ever heard in a long time. Like, not like fear or anything, just straight pain. Um, drummer we see has a new spine. That's pretty cool. Uh, and she's like, Naomi's trying to tell her that we're, we're going to Ellos, but we're not going there to evict people, right? But drummer, like kind of surprisingly is like calling these people foolish they shouldn't have gone down there like you know how many people died just trying to like get down there and all this other stuff they're being foolish you know and they're creatures that belters are creatures of space and they will soon be inner so she's she's trying to preserve like their way of life but at the same time she's not wrong about like these people just kind of running down there without you know with just with reckless abandon, not even thinking it through. That these people are all about space, so they're just, they don't know what's waiting for them. They have no preparations. So, I mean, in a way, she's also kind of, you know, she's not just dissing them to diss them about leaving the belt, but just that they didn't even think about how, they, how to do it right. Um... Miller, though, when they finally get through, and I like, I still like that effect of like going through the ring and they get through it, and he's like, well, Miller, we're through the ring, and Miller goes, thanks for the ride, and then we see it from his viewpoint, which is all like digital and like, you know, red and blues, and he dips. Okay, so where the hell is Miller going, or the, the proto-molecule, because now he's in, free to just jump around, I guess which is very interesting as well. Um, and, you know, and I keep saying this, I'm, I'm kind of jumping around, but Ashford, you know, he keeps getting presented with things that are making this situation very complicated. It's a little heavy-handed, but it's okay. We, we need to set up conflict with these characters. And the more he's getting reminded of, of the, you know, him feeling like he's losing his belt away and siding with the inners, but, you know, with, with the conversation that he and Drummer have, you know, like, we all thought that Holden was crazy talking to himself. Turns out he was a prophet. <laughs> I like Drummer's response. Well, like, you know, it could also be both. He was crazy and a prophet. 
<laughs> so she can never quite give Holden, uh, you know, any kind of real credit. She's like the pat you on the back, kick you in the balls kind of person. You know what I'm saying? Um, we get transported to the Edward Israel that's uh, orbiting outside of the Terra Nova, where they drop uh, these scientists and another and, a, and, a, and some crew to go study the biome. Uh, one of the main guys on here is uh, Bern Gorman. Bern Gorman is a great character actor who's been on Game of Thrones and Torchwood. Uh, he is a fantastic actor. I am so glad that they have him on this show because he is he's really good at bad. Uh, he's also really good at being good too. He's a very I like him. He's a very chameleon-like actor. He's not just one thing. Uh, and I, I I'm so happy that he didn't get killed here because as soon as they get down, you know, it's, they're all happy. Hey, we're going down there. Hey, and thanks for when somebody says thanks for bringing me along. You know, like oh, thanks for talking me into this. You know that this isn't going to end well. And yeah, something goes firing right through the ship. Now I thought it was bullets, but we find out later what it probably really was. So, Gorm, Gorm, you know, his character, he's looking and seeing all, like, people are getting blasted out, the airlock, or not the airlock, there, there's holes in the ship, they're flying out, the cargo's flying out, and the next thing we see is the whole place is just, the whole ship is just littered all over the ground. He's cut up like a bastard, man. He's messed up. He's limping around. And instead of like uh, leaving and getting evacuated, he stays there to get fixed up and have to take control on the ground. Now, yeah, it probably means that he's probably not that good of a character because he <laughs> he's probably there for a real purpose. Because um, his buddy that went with him and most of everybody else got killed. But the belters that were there, these guys, you know, the ones that are right in the camera's face, they're the ones that find them and help them. Um... So, oh, and, and uh, Abbasarala's line uh, about going down there. Holden, do not, do not put your dick in it. It's fucked enough already. <laughs> and, and Amos going, well, that's pretty good advice. The writing is still so great. It's how people, like, if I just... It's not that it's not so witty that it's like too much like a fucking Kevin Williamson script, you know, where everybody just talks like they're all super cool or they all wish they were in a Quentin Tarantino movie. No, everybody gives really honest dialogue and and it's written in a way that never feels forced. You know, even when like Abbasarala, who has a major potty mouth, you know, it all feels like true to that character. And every single line uttered out of everybody's mouths in this episode of characters that we know is so true to their nature. So even after this time, didn't mean it, there's no missing a beat on any of these characters' motivations and how they behave. Just because some of the characters like Drummer and Ashford have signed a treaty, they're still them. They haven't like completely become new characters. They're still at their core the same as, uh, as always. Um, so then we get Naomi taking that first important step and it's a big deal especially for all of you guys that have been watching and reading and seeing her get to take her first steps out there like you know like Neil Armstrong walking on the moon you know a little wobbly but she stands her ground and it's like one of those kind of like when somebody out there starts making lists of the most important parts of the Expanse, you know, I can I can see a lot of people putting Naomi walking on New Terra for the first time is a huge deal because, I mean, she couldn't even do it for Holden uh, on Earth, but she's definitely going to do it to get out there and, 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 and help the Belters out, which is pretty cool. And once they get down there, the Belters automatically start in with, we're not going anywhere, man, you know, and they, I always kind of feel like they sound like Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> but not really. It's kind of just that, like, I don't know. I probably just pissed off a lot of people by saying it, but it's just, it's a it's an interesting dialect. And we've already got a standoff already. Everybody's pointing their guns at each other. And uh, that's when, literally, I see this cloud coming towards them. And I say, just as Holden says it, what the fuck is that? And then we find out what it was. It was probably blasting through the ship that made it crash. And it's these, it's like a swarm, right? But it's like made of metal. 
but it's not bugs. So I'm assuming it's some sort of artificial intelligence bug, something controlled by like a hive mind maybe, like one organism at, but acting as many. Like it's it's one thing just has many 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 pieces so that it can like part of it can come off maybe. I'm not sure, but Holden picks one of them up and it kind of moves. And it cuts everybody up. Now, here's what I'm saying. And another thing about intention, though, is if this thing wanted to, right? If these, if it really wanted to hurt them, it would. It could have killed everybody there, right? It could have just kept spinning around and spinning around and turned everybody into fucking, you know, chum. But it didn't. Maybe it doesn't even know that it's, you know, doing it. Who knows? I don't want to assume anything because, like I said, I haven't read the books. But that's um, where the episode ends. And uh, like I said, I don't know how many of these I'm going to do like in succession. I was going to do one a week, but I'm thinking that uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to hold off. But, I'm, but I still got to keep to my schedule. So I'm going to fit these in when I can. I'll probably have like episode two out tomorrow uh, just because it's my day off, maybe even episode three. Because uh, I, I have a feeling that like as I've been talking to people, nobody's waiting. <laughs> Everybody seems to be binging. And you know what? Even though I want to stay true and everything, I don't want to get left behind. I don't want to get left behind. I want to be. I don't want to be left in the dirt, and having everybody else knowing everything more than I do. So, I guess this is just what's gonna happen. I guess this is just what's gonna happen. I mean, I'm not gonna fully binge it, but I'm gonna watch as many as I can, uh, just to keep up with you guys. They're gonna plow through this. So anyway, that's episode one. It was fan freaking tastic. It really makes you want to see episode two. It's gonna be really hard for me to not just jump into episode two, but I've got lots to do still, so I'm gonna force myself to not just jump into episode two. So if you like this review, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel and you like the content and you want to be a part of the contest, you have to become a subscriber so go ahead and subscribe please if you want to help this channel grow we are just past a thousand subscribers we did that just recently and a lot of it is because of shows like this so if you're not a subscriber and you're enjoying the content that would be great otherwise if you want to know more about any time these videos come up hit the bell for all notifications share this video with other people who like the expanse so that they can find these videos because uh, at this time, uh, when I looked it up, there was only one other person that had an Expand Season 4 video up for Episode 1. Uh, anyway, so you can find me on Twitter at Reviews underscore Gun. If you feel so inclined, you can donate to my channel to make it a little bit better, putting money back into the channel at paypal.me slash smirkinggunreviews. Otherwise, this is Rob at Smirking Gun Reviews saying, have a great night, and we will be back with more Expanse Season 4. And remember... Doors and corners, kids. Always look for your doors and corners.